Refraction has a lot of possible applications. Uh, one of them is just making cool distorted images. I mean, look at this guy, just the way he's standing there, although he's spelling it funny here. But if you look at this, it makes a really cool sort of distorted images. Maybe you've experienced this if you're in the bath or, you know, in the water, and you look down at your arm, and it looks like your arm sort of broke, you know, because your arm seems to be sort of at a different angle. That's also refraction. Now we have another uh, application, it's called dispersion. Now dispersion is uh, basically when you break light into different colors, that's what's happening here. And that's actually because you're sort of, you're spreading out the light. So in this case right here, if you break light into different colors, that could be an example of dispersion. I'm gonna write the American way colors like this, not the Canadian or British way, which would have a U here. But if we break light into different colors, that's that's dispersion. If we sort of we split it or break it into different colors, so an example of that could be let's say we have a prism here, some some sort of prism. Me, you actually sometimes see this effect really happening here. So let's say we have sunlight. So maybe we have the sun here. There it is, and it's giving off some nice light for us. So there's the sun. And the sunlight is going to come in here like this. So that's the sunlight. Now we often call it white light. This is going to be the key thing here. We often call this white light because it actually contains many different colors are actually in that light. Now the why, why is it then that it doesn't actually look like lots of different colors? Well, the detector in your eye just gets confused. It seems so many different colors, it just says, oh, that's white. But it turns out lots of different colors are actually contained within this sunlight here. What happens with the prism is it's going to disperse, it's going to cause this effect, this dispersion, which is going to be to break the light or split it into different colors. Now what's really happening is this, this is the key thing I think, is that the different colors, this is really what's happening here. So the different colors, well, they all have a different wavelength. Remember the symbol for wavelength, it's lambda. So they all have a different wavelength. So uh, when we learned about Snell's law, that means they will have, you know, as they go through this material, so they will have different angles. So that's really what will happen. And the real effect then is that, well, light, let's say with a different wavelength, will end up having a different angle of refraction. So in this case, it turns out this white light will get split or broken up into different colors. Maybe not necessarily break light, we can say split light. You know, that's also another way to say it. We can split the light. So what's really going to happen then is the red light, which has, for example, a larger wavelength, will have a smaller angle of refraction. So in this case right here, let's say this right here might look red. And then we might have something like, you know, yellow in the middle. This is really hard to read, but no problem. And after that, you know, we'll have all the different colors, but then, you know, we'll have something like blue over here. So these right here will sort of spread, and this makes a sort of rainbow effect here. So what really happens then is that this right here, it sort of gets, yeah, it gets sort of bent like this or dispersed. So that's really what dispersion is. So this is what explains why, and this is a real picture here. So if you have light coming in, well, what happens, of course, is that some of the light sort of goes this way and it comes out. It basically splits the light up. So you see, it makes like a rainbow here. And that's just because you actually initially have white light. Actually, I think it's going like this. Some of this light right here will also get reflected because it's not perfect. Some of it goes through the material. Some of it goes, bounces out. But no matter what happens, you end up with dispersed here. Dispersion happens and you have the white light being broken up into its different colors. So there it is. So that's, that's what's going on here. Now what I can do as well is, um, I mean, we can, we can look at a different animation as well. What I'll do here is I'm going to look up a different uh, PHET animation. Uh, I didn't prepare it ahead of time, but that's okay. I can just go to this one right here and look up PHET. Oops, actually this is pretty ugly here. I'm just going to go to the PHET website here. So PHET.colorado.edu. I'm going to look for one called Bending Light. Bending Light. 
if I do that one, there it is, that's the one I want. I'm gonna run now. Okay, so here it is. I can choose a laser here and make like a ray. And what I can do then is have the, you know, I can choose the different angle here. So what I'm gonna do is set up my protractor like this. This is my material, it starts off as air, ends up as water. And just to show uh, what we can do, we can actually take this angle. Now if you remember before, we did an example with refraction, where we actually had this thing right here at an angle of 50 degrees before. So initially it was actually at 50 degrees. So this is 30, so this is 40, so this is 50. There it is. And the question had been to then calculate what the angle of refraction would be. And look, it's 35 degrees. That's this angle right here. It's 35 degrees. So see how easy that was. This thing right here is actually very accurate, which I think is, is kind of cool, actually. So, I mean, you can do this like this. You can actually even use this and use a prism, for example. You can throw a prism in front here, and you can have this. Well, this is just red light, so that's not very exciting. But what if I had white light coming in? It's hard to see here, but it actually splits the light up. And depending on the angle you put this, of course, then this whole thing right here will change. It'll do different things. And you can play around with different shapes and stuff. But this is just to show sort of what we were looking at before. So that is an example of dispersion. Now, of course, an example of dispersion is rainbows. Uh, those are actually really cool. This is a real picture here. So what happens with rainbows? Well, you have... You have water droplets. I mean, it has to be raining, or at least it has to be moist. You have to have water in the air. And the water droplets, they act like little prisms. So just like what we were looking before, they act like little prisms. So for example, if you're standing here on the ground like this right here, and let's say this right here is a sunlight over here, let's just say something like this. What happens? You have these little... You have these little drops of water in the air. And I'm going to draw giant versions of these water drops, even though obviously they're not. But let's just say you're looking something like this. What happens then is the light from this one right here, for example, well, what will happen is inside the light will actually get split. You'll have some red and you'll have some blue. So in other words, you'll have dispersion happening here. And same thing over here. You'll have some of the red coming out and some of the blue coming out. Turns out the reds will be above, the blues will be below. And this effect of lots and lots of different water droplets actually makes this rainbow effect. So that's really what's happening here. You have these water droplets doing this. And we even have other effects uh, with refraction. We have what's called a mirage. So this, I mean, you might have seen this in sort of shows or even cartoons where someone's, you know, in the desert and they end up seeing, it looks like water on the ground. Can you see this? Like this is, you know, this is the ground and it looks like on the horizon here, it looks like this is water. And, you know, someone in the desert, let's say if you're really thirsty, maybe you, this will drive you crazy because you'll think there's water up ahead. There's some oasis. Turns out as you get there, you realize there's nothing there. Now, how can that possibly be happening? Well, if this is you, what happens is, uh, I mean, let's just say we have we have the ground. So we're going to draw the ground maybe, well, I guess on the ground here like this, something like this. What you have here, you have cooler air and hotter air. You have sort of like two different layers. So maybe I'll just sort of draw this sort of layer here. So you maybe have a layer like this. Over here, this is, this is hotter air. And up above, you have cooler air. So you have a sort of big difference in air temperature. So what happens then is that light, let's say from the sky, well, light from the sky will just kind of come directly in. So that's not very exciting. So that means, you, I mean, you get light from here into the camera, so that's okay. But what's going to happen is some of the light from the sky will actually do this. So it'll sort of go into the cooler air here and it'll actually be able to sort of bend and it actually bends until it sort of, reaches you. That's what this cooler air can do. It can act like a like a many times sort of pre, uh, refraction here. So it'll sort of bend in a sense. So because of that, I mean, yes, you look from your eye here. If you looked up, you'll see the sky. Sure. But it turns out if you look down, check this out. This is actually pretty cool here. So what if you look down here? If you're looking down towards this, see some of the some of the light from the sky actually came from above here and bent and then went like this. What it does, it makes it look like you see the sky right here. It makes it look like you see the sky right there. 
So you see sort of like an image, a false image of the sky. That's why mirage is actually, that word actually means sort of, you know, something that's not there. So what you're doing is you're sort of, it looks like the sky is down here as well as up here. So yes, you see the sky here, but can you see this is a little, a little mini image of the sky right here. In fact, it sort of makes like a reflection. It also does it with this light from here, basically you can bend and make it look like it came from here. So this is what a mirage does. And then you can actually have the opposite as well. You can have like these ghost ships here. So this is a, the opposite example. So here you have, let's say here's you here like this. And maybe this here's the ground or in this case, the water. Well, in this case, you have cool air down below. And then you have hot air above. So what happens in this case then is you have light from a boat. So let's say this is your boat right here. This is the sort of boat. Maybe that's the object you're looking at here. So of course light from the boat is going to reach you, right? I mean, of course you're going to have that happen. But it turns out some of it, so that's why the boat looks like it came from over there. So that's like this boat. But some of the light from this boat right here will actually do this. So like we did before right here when some of the lights sort of look like it bent this way. In this case right here, some of this light will actually look like it went like this. It'll sort of look like it bent like this right here. So because of that, it looks like part of the boat was up here. So this right here could be like the image of the boat right here. So it could be, you know, you might see the boat up here. This sort of fake image of the boat because it'll appear like it came from up there. Even though the light actually went like this, near on down. You, your brain will interpret it and actually it'll look like it came from up there. This is an example of this ship right here and it's got sort of this ghost image above. And some people thought that they saw ghost ships. And that could also be the case. I mean, here you could have the case where maybe it looks like a ship is actually floating above the water. Maybe that's this. If you have hotter air down below and cooler air above, maybe it looks like there's some air between the water and the ship. So some people have thought there's like a ship that's glow, you know, sort of floating above. Or you can have this reversed image like this if there's cool and hot air instead of hot and cool like we had before here. So mirages are pretty cool. And uh, I mean, rainbows are a good effect, but basically all this stuff here and even dispersion, those are all applications and uses of refraction.